And so the last time we dealt on the true sign of faith, the true sign of faith, the true indicator of faith, as um, Jesus um, exalted about in Luke chapter 18. But today, I want to share with you, hallelujah, on our handle on the unseen and the unknown. Our handle on the unseen or on the unknown, especially on prayer. And it will make sense by the time we get through with it. Very short, but it's impactful. And it will encourage you to pray because the Lord laid on my heart to share this with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm reading to you from Romans, the eighth chapter from verse 18. Let's hear the um, exhortation of Paul in this. Okay. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature, the creature, the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. He subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So he's telling us about the creature and it's a uh, groaning verse 22 he says for we know that the whole creature groans and travails in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit the first fruits of the spirit what does that mean He's, he means because we receive the the spirit first okay the first fruits of so the first partakers of the spirit which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. Waiting for the adoption. To wait the redemption of our body. Okay? Waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, meaning when our, our vile bodies would be um, translated, transformed, changed. See, and we read about that even in the book of Philippians, where it says that God, by the power through which he is able to subdue all things to himself, would transform our vile bodies, okay, to partake of the heavenly. But remember, we're talking about prayer, so don't lose the focus. You see, I'm not deliberating on any of these because that's not our subject. I just wanted you to see where he's coming from. So he's talking about an expectation, okay, of a future glory. And he says, we're groaning for that change of our vile body to this heavenly body verse 24 and this is where you need to pay close attention for we are saved by hope saved by hope but he says hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for see so he says we're saved by hope meaning we we are we are delivered or we have an assurance because there's a hope. There's something we hope for. We're looking forward to. And he talked about it before. The glorious appearing of the Son of God. Okay? Where our human body, the natural body, will be transformed, transfigured, changed. Okay? So he says we are saved by that hope. Then he says something, but hope that is seen is not hope. Meaning, if you've already seen it, if you can already touch it, if you already have 
um, uh, a handle on it, a grip on it, it's no longer a hope. You see, you no longer hope for it because now you can relate with it. You see, for what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Meaning, if we hope for what we cannot see, what we do not know, what we are not able to interact with right now, then we will wait with patience for it. I hope you're following this. So he now says, likewise, meaning in the same manner. Now you see, why did I take you through that? It's because I wanted you to understand this part. Now this is the common part, part of it, Romans 8, 26, but you need to understand where he's coming from. He talked about hope. He talked about looking forward to something. He talked about a future glory and how that there's an expectation for it. There's a hope for it. There's a hope. Okay. There's hope for it. There's an expectation. But he says, a man doesn't hope for what he can see. It's something he can't see that he would hope for and he would patiently wait for it. Then he says, in the same vein, in the same manner, with the same understanding, the spirit helps our infirmities. I love this. He helps our weakness. He helps our weakness. And he, and he brings out one of the weaknesses here and the important one here. He says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So we don't always know what to pray for. We know that if we pray, God will take care of it. We know that if we pray, God will be able to intervene in it. But we don't always know what is ahead of us or what to pray for or to ask for the intervention of God for all the time. We don't always know. We don't always know. So he says, we know not what we should pray for as we ought to know. You know, it's because he says, men ought always to pray and not to think. But we don't always know what we ought to pray for as, you know. But the spirit, I, I needed to get where he's coming from. He just talked to you about hoping, uh, an expectation. But he says, you can't hope for what you have already seen or you already know about. But he says, in the same manner, there is a blind spot about us. We can't see everything. We don't know what's coming tomorrow. We don't know what's coming next tomorrow. We don't know what has been planned. But the Spirit himself, not itself, but himself, makes intercession. Meaning the Spirit plays a role in our prayer lives to help our blindness or the blindness or the limitation of our vision, of our ability to know. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. These are deep sighs. Deep sighs. Groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts. Who searches the hearts? The Bible tells us in the Old Testament about how God looks. He says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So he's talking about God. He says, he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. Why? Because the spirit knows. The spirit knows. The spirit knows what the situation is, what the problem is, what the thing to pray about is. And he's helping this one that cannot necessarily discern or see the problem as yet. But he knows. So he says he makes intercession and God knows what the mind of the spirit is because he searches the heart. You see, so he says he knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Meaning that this prayer is in accordance with God's will. So meaning God wants us to pray. God has something that he wants to do, but we don't always know exactly what it is. But there's a need to pray about it because without prayer, God's intervention is not possible. It's not really possible. Prayer is the way by which we usher in God's government, God's, God's power, God's ability, God's intervention. So I want you to see this as something, and one of the things that deliberates on the importance of prayer and predominantly or primarily praying in the spirit. This is one of the importance of praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. 
Because praying in the Spirit is praying in alignment with the Spirit. It's praying in accordance with the Spirit. And it says when you pray in accordance with the Spirit, you're praying in accordance with the will of God. Meaning that you're speaking in tongues. It, it helps to get rid of selfish prayer. This prayer is not selfish because it's by the Spirit. It's led by the Spirit. It's led by the Spirit. And I really want you to understand this. Because that's where the secret of verse 28 is. It doesn't, verse 28 is not just going to happen in your life. Just like that. No. He says there's a responsibility of prayer. He says from verse 24. Let me read this again. How many are following this? But if we hope for that we see not, we wait with patience for it. We wait, sorry, from verse 24 was, we are saved by hope, and but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? So you can't hope for what you're already seeing in front of you. But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait with patience. In the same manner, the Spirit helps, helps, helps our infirmities, our weakness, our inability. For we know not. We know not what we should pray for. We don't always know what we should pray for, what the situation is ahead. But the Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. And so he makes intercession for us. Now, it would be deceitful to think that the Holy Spirit is praying for you. He's not going to do your praying for you. Because that word helpeth means to take hold together against. Meaning, he is helping you pray out the will of God or pray through the problem. But there's one thing he needs and it's your tongues. It's your prayer. He needs your prayer. He will do the directing. So you find that when you're praying in the spirit a lot, that pictures may flash through your mind. Maybe the picture of a particular person or your, or, your, or your mind seems to be inclined in a certain direction. And you're not sure what the case may be just yet. But you're going to keep praying like that. Because this prayer is being governed by the Spirit. So this is how, through prayer, God can take care of future occurrences. Because he says, He that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then we know. Meaning it's a result. That because, listen, I, I can only take care of the things I can see. But the Spirit knows things I can't see. Everything that concerns my life and my destiny and everything in front of me. So when I yield to Him continually in prayer, when I'm praying often, praying always in fact, in the Spirit, praying always in the Spirit, He says, then I know that all things, then we know, then we know. Meaning we were, we were, we had a blindness about who knows tomorrow? Who knows tomorrow? Who knows tomorrow? But there is one thing that gives us an assurance that all things would eventually work out for good. You see? So he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow. And then he starts to talk about these people who are called according to his purpose. But he says, all things will work together for good. But all things... Working together for good is not just an ultimate result. You see, so some people are asking, oh, oh, um... Uh, do, do all things really work out for good? One of the things, yes, of course, that I deliberated on is that, yes, all things don't work together according to your plans, meaning it may not necessarily go exactly the way you wanted it to go, but you can be sure that when you pray consistently this way, there is nothing that can work to your disadvantage because before you meet the situation, you would have already been sensitive in the spirit to deal with it in prayer. You see? So it doesn't give a connotation that challenges won't come. But he says that you will come out victorious. You will come out victorious. Why? Because you were prepared ahead of time. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit shall tell you of things to come. Of things to come. He'll show you of things to come. He's not just showing you the future so you could be amazed by it. No, for you to be prepared for it. Pre prepared. Prepared. Ready. And in cases where there's a need for intervention... There's an ability. 
So you see that the prayer goes beyond just your prayer points in your prayer journal. The prayer goes beyond just the things that you think are important to you. But God also wants to open up a wider, a wider sphere of, of, of prayer. Dimension of prayer. That involves taking care of the unknown. So I said our handle of the unknown or the unseen. These are things we don't see, but they come against us. It's when you pray this kind of prayer that you know, oh, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Why? Because the Spirit of God already through prayer, already through being in line with Him, in sync with Him, is able to deal with situations. The Bible says that God was looking for an intercessor. He didn't find. He was looking for a deliverer. Why? Because He needs man. He needs man. He needs man. He needs your prayer. God said, I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to do so much for you. But one thing I need, I need your tongues. I need, I need your prayers. So the way towards that result in verse 28 is through this prayer. And I told you praying in the spirit. Because when you pray in the spirit, you are praying in the Holy Ghost. You're walking in the Holy Ghost. You're susceptible to the Holy Ghost. You're praying in line with him. And then he will show you the future. He will show you all things to come. He'll prepare you for the future and then he will take care of things through your praying about the future. So this is one of the many importances, or many importance rather, of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues and praying in the Spirit often, daily, as often as you can. In the shower, everywhere you are. Whether you, you have the opportunity to, to speak properly or to whisper in tongues, but you know that you're going to be ahead in life. Because really, God doesn't want you walking in darkness or in confusion or to necessarily be surprised at every single thing that comes your way. You don't have a God who is sleeping. But he sees ahead. So, I hope this would um, inspire you. I hope this would inspire you and stay your minds towards more praying. Towards more effective praying. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in, in line with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that we would find that life is a lot smoother. Life is a lot smoother. And things are getting settled. Because you've learned how to deal with things in prayer. Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So this is one of the amazing things that the Holy Spirit does for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want us to just take some time to pray now. Take some time to pray now. See, you're, you're settling things in the future. You're settling things that you may not be able to see now. See, it's why it's important not to pray when, just when there's a problem or, or there's a situation. But to pray always, without prayer and supplication. To pray always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.